In the years right before the recent financial crisis, say 2003 to 2006, we saw a dramatic increase in the amount of uh, lending to companies who didn't put covenants into their loans, and we at the same time saw a dramatic increase in the amount of uh, subprime mortgage debt that was securitized. And we're trying to understand why in a boom period right before the crisis was the incentive to be careful when you're setting up securitizations. Why was that so low? We looked at when it is that a company, or in the case of a household, a, a, a home buyer, can actually raise more money by choosing uh, a level of debt, a level of leverage, uh, so high that they no longer, the borrower no longer has any particular incentive to improve, say, the corporate governance. We learn that periods of high house prices, high stock prices, where uh, buyers in the industry uh, are very, very uh, flush with, with funds, naturally reduces the demand for honest intermediation. We see that there's been a huge increase in the last few years in what's called covenant light loans. These are loans to companies where there's no restriction on what they do uh, imposed by the bank that makes the syndicated loan. So our theory says that in periods like today where there's lots and lots of net worth in the corporate sector, covenant light loans are going to be the cheapest way and the best way to borrow. So covenant light lending could be a source of fragility in the corporate sector. Once one understands that the market doesn't naturally enforce uh, a good reason for firms to put covenants in their loans or banks to put covenants in the loans during high liquidity periods. If you see a boom in covenant light lending, you as a policymaker should be aware that there's a high potential for what are called imbalances or fragility if a shock should occur anytime, like a trade war or something like that in the next, next year or two.